Thank you, Mark P., for playing the guitar introduction to this video. Now let's consider a small 20-gram ball with a total charge of 3.5 microcoulombs hanging from a silk thread in an electrostatic field between two oppositely charged parallel conducting plates. <laughs> That's a mouthful. Uh, the essence of the problem is that this ball is hanging in equilibrium. It's, it makes a 30 degree, uh, string makes a 30 degree angle with respect to the vertical and we want to figure out what the tension in the thread is and what the electric force field vector is in between the two plates. So the place to start in a problem like this is by writing out the initial conditions. I'm extracting the 20 grams of mass and writing it as 0 .020 kilograms. I'm bringing the 3.5 microcoulombs out of the text and writing it with a factor of times 10 to the negative 6 ready for a calculation and I'm simply restating the hanging angle to be 30 degrees. Next I'm going to try to continue conceptualizing the problem by visualizing the left hand plate to be positively charged and then the right hand plate to be equally charged but with negative excess charge. I have six or so pluses on the left hand plate and I indicate six minuses on the right hand plate indicating equal charge opposite in polarity. The consequence of this is a uniform electric field pointing rightward and that's the direction of the electrostatic field. Later we'll be finding its magnitude. The next step is to draw a free body force diagram. So I've got a charged massive object with a tension force acting and a weight force acting and an electrostatic force acting to the right. And then with those three forces acting, um, I need to only add vectors together in collinear vector sums. So I'm going to decompose the uh, tension force into x and y components and then apply Newton's second law of motion. Now that form I've shown is a good form, but it uh, is a multi-dimensional form. I instead need to look at collinear vector sums. So all of just the y component forces added together and then separately all the x component forces added together. Three real vectors on the sum, three real terms in my sum. All of the vectors and their y components added together. The, x com the y component of the electrostatic force doesn't exist, so I let it go to zero. And then I'm just simply going to write out the positive direction of the vertical component of the tension, the downward direction of the weight force. I use the cosine function because the y component is close to this angle, cos is close. Do a little algebra and I'm ready to go. I can calculate straight away what the tension in the cord is. 0.226 newtons of tension in that cord. Uh, now to go to part B to get the electric force field magnitude I'm going to sum all three forces together. I've got the three terms and all the x components of those three forces. In this particular case the weight force doesn't pull in the horizontal dimension so I let it go to zero and I show the directions of the tension force, leftward for Tx and rightward for the electrostatic force. I'm using the sine function because the red Tx is opposite the angle, so far away I need a sine to find it. A little more algebra there, just separating them on either side of the equation. And now in this next step I'm going to replace the electrostatic force symbol F with what it really is, a charged particle in the electrostatic force field. So this is the charge of the ball this is the electric force field that it's in. The product of the two is electrostatic force. It's very much so the same as a massive object in a gravitational force field. The product of the two is the force. The f Earth's force field, big uh, little g here, gives this massive object of the ball a gravitational force. And the electric field between those two plates gives the charged object of the ball the electrostatic force. Uh, I also recognize the ratio of sine to cosine to be a very convenient tangent function, divide by Q, and I'm ready to go to make a calculation. 32,000 newtons per coulomb is the magnitude, the direction is to the right, and we're done.